Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic and today we're going to be discussing buttons, text boxes, exception handling, and math and assignment operators. So let's get started because we have quite a bit to do. So what if we want to create a button that, ha that executes a specific piece of code that we put in there? Well, let's see how we go about doing that. So go to your toolbox and click button and you know what I should probably stretch this a little bit and then just put it wherever then you can drag and move it wherever you'd like so I'll move it to about right here and what should we call it I'll call it let's call it exit and I can put a little ampersand in front of there type in E X I T click enter and there it is uh, now a very interesting thing that I haven't shown you yet and I'd like to show you with buttons is if you click on your form and look at the properties you can find two little buttons here or two properties here one's the cancel button you can set that to any button that you have on there we only have one so I'll set it to button one and I believe the other one is called accept yeah accept button now these two features what happens is whatever button you set to, to that if you press uh, escape while the application is running it'll execute whatever code you set to the cancel button and whatever button you put for the accept button will execute if you press enter so uh, we have no code though so we double click our button and as, as you can see we now have a subroutine for if you click button number one so I'm just going to show you something very simple because you should learn this and that's me anytime you type in me you're referring to the form itself to the application and then we'll want to close so I'll press tab and then put some parentheses right after that and basically it just closes the program as simple as that so uh, let's run this so if I click exit it closes um, if I press alternate and then press the E since that's what's underlined it also exits and then if I run it again if I press the escape it exits it closes uh, so yeah that's really really neat uh, but enough of that let's actually get into text boxes now now what if you would like to create variables uh, and the information that goes in these variables is whatever the user types in so I want to do some simple math so let's create two text boxes and then eventually we'll do some math to them so I'm just gonna create two text boxes like this grab another one and you can also copy and paste if you want to. You can just right click these and you can copy and paste them if you wish. Uh, that's a faster way to do it. And I'll call this, oh, uh, I'll put, I'll call it text input one. Hopefully I spell all of these right. Then for this, I'll change it to text input two. And I believe that should work. And let's actually rename this button to calculate because we'll eventually you know go about doing that so let's say we want to do some math right so um, that this is kind of a few things we'll be learning at once but anyways uh, just go to your uh, did I, I didn't change this did I oh whoops oh I, I'll put BTN in front of there that's shorthand for button and I'll change this to calculate there you go now it says calculate so let's go back to the calculate button and let's get rid of this. Uh, we definitely don't want this to close. And outside of all of these, let's actually declare our variables first. So we're going to have two inputs and then a final value that will contain whatever math you do with it. So first it's called dim input one as single. And then our second one will be dim input underscore two as single and dim let's call it total as single and there's our three right there so now how do we get the information from the user well, what you can do is when they uh, click the button in the subroutine um, actually um, let me go into exception handling first just because that's important and that's basically if they type in invalid information that might cause the application to crash for an example, uh, what if they type in a string? What if they put in characters? It won't be able to read it as a single. You'll be setting input as a string, which is impossible, and the application will crash. So we'll want to um, solve that. So type in try, and then press enter. And then these other two things pop up. 
So the end try is basically just at the bottom, and you'll want to put all your code within the try. Now as for the... Oh, I don't need this much space here. For the this catch, basically if it catches an error, what you do is you type in message box. Then after that, type in show, and then a pair of parentheses. And then inside of these parentheses, basically you can type in x dot message, which basically it'll show a default, um, a default error. For the title, which is what will pop up in the upper left corner of the window that will pop up, you type in the string, just for a default error. You can put whatever you would like. And then after that, whatever set of buttons you'd like to have pop up. So you see we have all these different message box buttons. Let's just go for an OK. And then that'll pop up if there's any errors that occur. So let's um, go back to setting the information. So we have input 1, I believe. Oh, whoops, I misspelled it. There it is. Input 1 is equal to, then in order to convert whatever you type in inside of the text box, you type in C followed by the shorthand. So you see all these shorthands up here? C deck is decimal. This is a double date. Well, we're single, so we we'll go S, N, G, and then a pair of parentheses. Then inside the parentheses goes the name of the text box you gave it. So I gave it text, input one, dot, text. And then that's going to fetch the information, whatever you put in there. Uh, so we're going to do this again for input two. Uh, I keep doing that. It is equal to C single and then text. And this is why I put the TXTs or the whatever I put there for the shorthand because then it only list, it's going to list all of my uh, little things here only and it's easier to use in IntelliSense. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> my bad everybody. And, oh goodness. Then we're going to want to mess with the total, right? So now we're going to introduce the arithmetic operators, which is the math. So what do we want to do first? Let's go input 1 plus input 2, shall we? Then, well, we've got a bit of a problem. I actually forgot to create a label to uh, put the, the answer on. So let's create a label and, I don't know, turn auto size off. False. Let's um, get this centered and let's keep the text blank. And let's change the border style to. I wish I could change the default to these. Fixed 3D, so it'd be something like that. So let's go back to the code and type in label. Whoops, excuse me. Oh, I, sorry, I didn't change the. I didn't call it label output. That's the one thing I really worry about is making sure I spelled everything right. So label output dot text will be equal to total dot to string and this should work. So let's click save and then run this program. So if I type in two here and I type in three here, it should add them and then you get five. And that's really cool, isn't it? Uh, and uh, for all the different operators you have minus so I'll click to save and then I'll run this um, just just to show it off let's see if it can support negative numbers so 2 minus 5 what do you think will happen well it gave us a negative number so that's cool uh, also bear in mind if you're gonna be working with decimals make sure you're working with like single double or decimal not the byte or the integer and none of the integers because they don't support decimals especially when you go into division uh, multiplication, you will use the asterisk. So I'll click save and do this again. And I'll go, what, 5 times 6, you get 30. And now there's two different divides. You have the regular divide, which is the forward slash. Basically, it'll give you a decimal as an answer if it needs to. So if you go 6 divided by 4, you get 1.5. Uh, but then you have this other one which is the backslash and that's an integer division basically it'll just show you the integer so if I do the 6 and 4 again and click calculate it only gives you 1 so bear in mind it said 1.5 before so that should tell you it does not round 
in, in case you're wondering, it, it does not round. Uh, so yeah, and there's also the modulus. Modulus is usually uh, a percent, is usually defined by a percent sign in most languages, but here I, it's just mod, you just type in MOD. And what that does is it returns the remainder. So if I press F5 for an example and I type in, I don't know, 6500 or 6545 and then I go mod 1000, it should return the 545 because 1000 goes into this six times, but it can't go into that 545. So the 545 is the remainder. Uh, let's do another example. I'll go 7 and 2 and we get 1 and the reason is because we go 2 4, 6, but then we have one more left over, right? So that's the remainder in there, so that, uh, so yeah. Uh, and I think, it, oh yeah, there's also exponents. So you can also do exponents, so I click save, I'll build, and I'll do the infamous, I don't know, it's not infamous, the 2 to the 5th power. I mean, why not? You get the 32. So you can do exponents as well. Most programming languages don't have this supported, you would have to access the math object in most languages in order to do exponents, which is separate than this, but you don't have to worry about that for Visual Basic, so don't worry. And yeah, uh, and the last thing I'd like to show you are assignment operators. Uh, the first assignment operator, as you can see, is the equals to. Um, actually, allow me to write out a lot of these. So for, um, excuse me, arithmetic, We had adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, integer dividing, modulus, and exponents. And then for assignment operators, we have the equal sign. So basically, it's setting this side equal to this side. That's what the equals does. You don't need to know this now. Or actually, no, that's not an assignment operator. I was no, this is an assignment operator. What I was about to do was not uh, ignore that. So you have the equals sign, uh, and then you have a bunch of others: the plus equals, minus equals, times equals, divide equals, uh, the integer divide equals, and I think that's it. Oh yeah, and concatenation, which you don't need to know now. I'm going to do that in the next video for strings. Uh, these guys, what they do is they save the value of whatever you put in there and then adds or does whatever the operator is to it. So basically, what I can do here is um, down here, what if I wanted to add 5 to the answer? What I could do is type in total plus or equals 5 and what happens is whatever it does here, it'll add 5 to it. So if I do this, 2 to the 5th power is 32, right? Well, now it's 37, because what it did is it saved that 32 by doing this plus equals. Another way to write this out would be equal to total plus 5, but basically that was just a shorthand. So you have the plus equals 2, and you have the minus equals, times equals, and all these. I'm not going to show you examples because that takes too long, and you understand that. I mean, that's, that's pretty obvious. So you have all of these. So these are the arithmetic operators of Visual Basic, and these are the assignment operators, including concatenation, the catenation one here, which we'll talk about in the next one. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video, and I um, hope these were good examples for you, and I'll see you next time.